Illustrator really changed things way back. It started making the computer a real graphics tool. I think I just saw the future, and it just was really exciting to me. I just wanted to learn it. You've never seen anything do something like this before. You can make changes, and things would happen instantaneously. It's, it's like magic. So I'm the classically trained graphic designer. I did rub down text. That's sort of like bear skins and stone knives. I used French curves and rulers. The process of getting camera ready art was pretty involved back in the day. You had multiple elements. This is a really old piece that was done before computers. It was really time intensive. You would sketch out a comp with all the measurements, and then you'd lay out your page. Copy had to be specced. Uh, what kind of typeface are you going to use? What point size? The text was spit out from a, a typesetter, which was cut up and pasted onto the boards. One page of set type, it might take a day or two days to actually do. The rapidograph. You know what rapidographs are, that pen that always clogs up and spits. It stains clothes, it stains your hands. The rapidograph decides to explode. Anything could go wrong. When your hand is just doing the final little touch and all of a sudden you jerk and it's ruined and you'd have to start all over again. I'm just so pleased that I never have to struggle through that again. John Warnock always had a vision in his mind of Adobe Illustrator existing. I just don't think that technology was there. The computer wasn't there. I had joined Xerox in 1978, and their goal was to make the office of the future. We had text editors, email networks, we had laser printers. What they didn't have is graphic engines that could make sort of arbitrary graphics. They were computer scientists, and they were imagining what computer scientists wanted to do. They weren't imagining what the world was trying to do from a creative point of view. And they were simply not making tools to address that community. One time I was at a conference listening to John speak, though, and he said the reason he invented Illustrator was because his wife couldn't ink. <laughs> I know he meant it very kindly, but... I think Marva and her graphic design background influenced John to venture into the world of graphic arts and to solve problems for graphic designers. The very first thing we collaborated on was radial corners. Letraset had corners that were pre-done, and if you needed a specific radius that they didn't have, you were out of luck. She would say, I need a rectangle that's this size with this radial corner, and I would fill in a couple of parameters and print it. And trying to figure out how to do that on the computer was really critical to the design of PostScript. John Warnock and Chuck Geschke invented PostScript because there was something missing in the industry. There was bitmap typefaces and bitmap images there was lots of languages driving printers, so they wanted to come up with the universal language which would drive a printer of any make, any model, now and into the future. And that was an amazing vision. If it wasn't for PostScript, there would be no desktop publishing. It sort of opened the doors that you were able to produce layouts and magazines. PostScript was a page description language, and you use this language to describe how to draw the page. The description of the objects are all vectors and curves. The major breakthrough with PostScript is that you could have any size type. You could stretch it and squash it and do anything you wanted to it. It could deal with images, it could deal with graphics, but you had to be a programmer to actually do it. There weren't any applications to drive it. We started development in 1985 of Illustrator. 
Mike Schuster was the very first programmer on the product. He's clicking and dragging and creating a Bezier curve. I was pretty amazed by that. It was a direct translation of how people drove PostScript, but you didn't have to program. It would just emit the PostScript code that would make the drawing for you. It gave you very, very precise control, which I knew from Marva's work, you needed, you had to have it. When Illustrator went into beta, I wanted to do a drawing that would express something that you absolutely couldn't program. I drew on a piece of tracing paper a picture of a rose, but then I executed it in Illustrator. When people saw that this was the kind of thing that you could do with Illustrator, they just went bonkers. They thought that was fantastic. It was just revolutionary. Just before Illustrator came out, I had to come up with some demo files to show it off. And I saw some work being done by an artist by the name of Ron Chan in San Francisco, who did everything in an Illustrator-like fashion, but he did it with ink and pen and colored overlays. So he's a great candidate for someone who should be using Illustrator. Basically the whole project was just to produce this one piece of artwork of this nurse with a French curve. It was such a simple program at that time. It didn't have any undo commands, so anytime I made a mistake, the guy that was with Russell would come over and go into the code and erase the code and say, okay, you can start off again. We were just trying to get the thing to work. So we scan in this reference art and he does this illustration of this nurse and there's big dots all over so she looks like a Lichtenstein you know, print. If I only known about Adobe Illustrator and there's a tear coming down her eye. January of 87, we came out with the first version of Illustrator. We're now a software company and we have products like Adobe Illustrator. That has to be packaged, has to be promoted. Because it was such a new kind of a product, I did a one-take video take <laughs> and demoed the product. I'm John Warnock, president of Adobe Systems, and I'd like to welcome you today to view a tape that we've prepared about Adobe Illustrator. It addresses the professional illustration market, and it has a lot of capabilities that you won't find in other programs. I'd only been at Adobe for a few months, and Russell said, here, design the packaging for Illustrator. So I started thinking about classical art and the Renaissance, and I saw the painting of Botticelli's Venus, and I thought, that's the one. I was sold, I was sold the minute I saw it. It was that ability to manipulate curves that really got me, because curves are very important, especially if you're designing type. Traditionally, I wanted that curve and I wanted to give it a little more curve. If it wasn't right, I had to white it out and start again. Whereas in Illustrator, I could just grab it and move it. I saw the potential from what I did in it. That's what got me excited about it. I started creating TV web covers at the Chronicle on the computer, on a Mac, using Illustrator. I started doing more and more complex things. It would always be crashing the rip of DPI. This is the one that crashed the rip. Back then, this was all fairly new stuff, and people were very resistant to the whole idea of going digital. This concept of a computer that could draw these shapes for you, we were introducing a whole new way of thinking. There were a lot of people that were very skeptical. So we did this video of me jumping out of an airplane as sort of the metaphor of here's how scary it is to go outside your comfort zone. I hated jumping out of the airplane, by the way. People loved it. I think because they could identify with it. Because for them to make that leap then, it was super scary.
there were skeptics for quality of text. What was the precision of the line? You know, I've used my rapidograph in years past, and I create this perfect line. And so here I come along, I'm trying to evangelize the process of using an Adobe Illustrator. I search for some of the best designers out there, and I bring them to invitationals I'm putting on. We set up Adobe Illustrator, brought these skeptics into the room, and changed their whole lives. We called it influencing the influencers, and it was really, really effective. We had some amazing artists. David Hockney came. Key figures in publishing, like Life and Time, uh, New York Times. We introduced this technology to Time Magazine, and boom! Every infographic at Time Magazine has now been done in Illustrator. All of the economics of publishing a magazine changed dramatically. And it was really Illustrator and PostScript and the printers and the Mac that started all of that. Multiple designs could be done in half the time and production changed completely, so it was a revolution. It can only be equated to perhaps when Gutenberg came up with the, the printing press. <music> Illustrator, it really has changed the world and it's changed the way graphic designers work and the art that's been created and it's absolutely precise and perfect and adjustable. What people have been able to do with Illustrator is just astounding. Everybody said you're going to ruin good design because now anybody can do it, but the cream rises to the top. The creativity is in the designer. The creativity is in the person who uses the tools. I think I was meant for digital because it's just the tool that I want to deal with and not the maintenance. As you think it, you can create it. The idea that you can sit in front of this box and craft extraordinary things that can be repurposed and published anywhere is phenomenal. My Zen time is when I am just pointing and clicking away and endlessly manipulating Bezier curves. My chosen medium is Adobe Illustrator. It's the thing I feel most comfortable in and I think I probably wouldn't be doing what I do if I didn't have that as a tool. If you see me hold a pencil, I hold it like a five-year-old holds a crayon. It's really ridiculous. There's very different ways to work digitally. You can work digitally and still work in a very hand-hewn, handmade human way. Most of the work that I do by hand with lettering is really just part of my process of creating on the computer. My sketches are really just notes, so they don't have to be beautiful. I'll just take an iPhone photo of the sketch, and then I usually just drop that into an artboard in Illustrator to actually get the vector work in there. Daily Drop Cap was my first major project that I did that was sort of me putting myself out there and creating something online. I would draw a letter every single day and work my way through the alphabet 12 different times. Drop Cap sort of came from this tradition of illuminated manuscripts. I really thought about all of these letters as being these like illustrative initial caps that you could put into your blog. It got traction almost immediately, and so much came from it. Most recently, this Penguin Drop Caps project in which I'm doing 26 classic books. They created a dream project for me at Penguin, which is pretty amazing. I consider Illustrator my pencil on the canvas. It's how I plan my, my painting that create the basic elements in Illustrator, and then Photoshop becomes the paint on top of those vectors. I tried many different angles and I could just never capture Times Square. And then when these giant printers came out, I realized that was the way to show Times Square it has to be big like the place itself. 
The actual perspective was created in Illustrator because of the sheer size of it. It actually measures five feet on the height and 25 feet on the width. The beauty of Illustrator is that since it's resolution independent, I can work very small and enlarge it without losing any detail. A lot of my scenes are neons and lights, so to have them actually backlit, it really brings out the brilliance of, of, of the image. So that's a whole new way of doing things is light boxes. Illustrator integrates into all of my projects at some point in the pipeline, guaranteed. It is resolution independent. It doesn't matter what size you're working on. You can design for a billboard. You can design for your smartphone. A calligram is an illustration that is made out of type. It's like a mosaic made of words. You're taking the type on a path tool tens of thousands of times per illustration. And everything's vector. The entire illustration, you can zoom in infinitely and you will get down to the smallest piece of type. The Steve Jobs piece is made of the ad that Apple ran in the late 90s, here's to the crazy ones, the misfits, the rebels, the troublemakers. And so I took that copy and the most iconic Steve Jobs look and illustrated him. When I posted this piece to DeviantArt, I thought, I just want to share this with people. In a few days time, it explodes. Pretty soon the counter's up to like over 100,000 views. The design director of Time Magazine sees my illustration of Steve Jobs, and he loves it. It's been an amazing adventure to look back over these years and to see how Illustrator starts as this spark of an idea and it essentially explodes in all directions. Illustrator is just like a pen or a paintbrush. And it all goes back to starting a blank canvas and creating something out of thin air. At this point, it's like, surprise me. What else can you possibly come up with? They're magicians to me, these code writers. They just create these incredible tools. And for me, it's just more toys to play with. I think what we've been able to do is just release the creativity in people and allow them to think anything they want and be able to create it. <laughs>